Hi, my name's Abe and welcome to my walkthrough of the 2009 Methods Exam 1. Um, in this walkthrough, I just want to show you that Methods is not that difficult. I also want to show you what I'm thinking as I go through each of these questions. And hopefully we can finish all of this in less than an hour, which is the time allotted for the exam. So let's get started. Um, if you have a copy of the exam, I certainly recommend that you do the exam before you have a look at this video. So yeah, I'm going to get into it. So first question, 1A, goes differentiate x log x with respect to x. Pretty simple first up question, I think, just to get your nerves out of the way. So, I'm just going to tell you what I'm thinking. Think. Actually, not much to think. Chain rule. Right? And you'll also think that this is easy. There's no tricks on this. Absolutely no tricks. So, getting into it. The first part of the function is x. The second half of the function is log x, right? What does the chain rule say? The chain rule says, find or get dy dx is x times the derivative of log x, which is 1 on x, plus the derivative of x, which is 1, times log x. And that's it. Simplify nicely. Notice that the x's cancel and give you 1, not 0. And so you're just left with 1 plus log to the base e x. First question out of the way. Everyone's happy. Excellent. On to part 1b. So part 1b says for f of x equals cos x over 2x plus 2, find f dash to pi. So they're saying find the derivative of this function and evaluate it at pi. Again, very simple. This is what I'm thinking. Think quotient rule. And also think to yourself, easy. These are cheap marks right at the start of the exam. Okay, so get into it. Remembering what the quotient rule is. So the derivative, you know, is... Now the top, bot top function is u, bottom function is v, right? So we can all see this is the quotient rule. So the top function is u, bottom is v, and so the um, quotient rule is v, u dash, so v is 2x plus 2 times u dash is negative sine x minus u, which is cos x, times v dash, v dash is 2, all over v squared. There it is. That's the derivative. Now, smart thing to do is to not simplify until the very end. So, I really probably should have written f dash of x instead of dy dx, but that's okay. Um, I'll go ahead with f dashed pi equals, well, so you just sub pi for x, so 2 pi plus 2 times, oh look, sine of pi is 0. Gets rid of that part, cos of pi is negative 1, so minus negative 1 times 2, all over 2 pi plus 2 squared. Alright, so there you go, 2 on 2 pi plus 2 squared, and you can simplify that out a little bit further, 2 on, so I'm going to take take the factor of 2 out of the bracket. Remembering that it's squared, you'll get 4 on the bottom. Pi plus 1 squared equals 1 on 2 pi plus 1 squared. There you go. Question 1 be negotiated easily. All right, on to question 2. Okay, so question 2a says, find an, an, an antiderivative of 1 over 1 minus 2x with respect to x. Okay, all you need to do is find an antiderivative. First thing you need to think is, well, aside from easy, it's we've got 1 over a linear, which you should think is a log, right? But notice that the coefficient of x is not 1, so you need to compensate that for that somehow. So I'm sure you would have come across this kind of thing before. You just 
basically put the bottom part in a log and you have to divide by the coefficient of x inside um, that linear part. So very simple again you basically say okay you think of that formula and you say alright well integral of 1 on 1 minus 2x dx is negative 1 on 2 right or 1 on negative 2 because the coefficient of x is negative 2 and then log to the base e of 1 minus 2 x easy out of the way um, there's two marks on this question so you might just want to write down that formula above in case you know they just think you're writing down the answer and nothing else excellent okay so on to 2b 2b is really simple it simply says evaluate the integral of root x plus 1 between 1 and 4 there's no think for this section you don't need to think you should know how to do this pretty simply right it's very mechanical this part so all you do is you use these square brackets you um, integrate that function inside you know how to do that with root x so you know that x the power of or root x is x to the power of a half so you can say this right we increase the power by 1 divide by the new power plus x and your terminals are 4 and 1 so you just put in 4 and you minus 1 so you get 2 thirds times 4 to the power of 3 on 2 plus 4 minus 2 thirds now you know that x to any power is just 1 right and then x is 1 there you go now I suppose the smallest bit of the trick is that um, this part is what 4 cubed and then square that um, not square square root or you can square root 4 and then cube it so I'm gonna do that square root 4 and cube it so it's 2 to the power of 3 right so that part is 8 simple so you simply say okay so that's 2 thirds times uh, I'm not gonna do that I'm just gonna write 2 thirds times 8 is 16 on 3 plus 4 is 12 on 3 minus 2 thirds minus 3 thirds right and we can all put this together you'll see that 16 plus 12 minus 2 minus 3 will give you 23 so 23 on 3 is your final answer for 2b awesome on to question 3 Okay, so question three says, find the inverse of three on x minus four. Now notice that they've given you a slight clue here. They've included the domain and range, meaning you should also include the domain and range in your answer. But let's worry about that later. Let's just do the question, right? So you all know how this works, right? So you sub, you just put y here, instead of f of x and to find the inverse you swap x and y right so for the inverse you just go okay x equals 3 on y minus 4 simple algebra will tell you that y equals 3 on x plus 4 but we are not finished this is where you need to think domain and range okay notice the domain we've been given the domain we've been given is reals except for zero why not zero because you have three on X you can't do zero and you know what this thing looks like right it's a one on X kind of graph there is one asymptote meaning that the ins the inverse is also going to have one as one asymptote the other asymptote so the domain of our inverse is going to be r as well except for an asymptote now where does that asymptote occur asymptote occurs at x equals minus 4 
right? So when that bottom part is equal to zero. So make a note of that. And basically you just say, that's great. Note that you don't have to write the function exactly the way they want it. You can just say f dashed, so not f dashed, f inverse of x is three over x plus four, and then state the domain. x is an element of reals, but x cannot equal minus four. Done. Question three out of the way.